our dependable Rotus Adiri is here to give us an African business update. Good morning, Rotus. Good morning, Tundu. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Rufai. Uh, good morning to all our viewers. Yeah, we begin with the, uh, the this day uh, piece on the ECA account. The federal government, there you see them uh, quoting the uh, this day Twitter handle. Everybody follow this day, this day live on Twitter. Uh, government said the 35 million disbursement from the excess crude account is from uh, June 23 is an advance payment for the purchase of brand new OPVs, which are offshore patrol vessels for the Nigerian Navy as part of efforts to consolidate on maritime security gains recorded in the Gulf of Guinea. You know how bad the piracy has been there. The second tweet, uh, the government then says, earlier this year, Nigeria exited the International Maritime Bureau piracy list. Most recently, the IMB list noted that there were zero actual or attempted piracy and ship armed robbery incidents in Nigerian waters in the first half of 2022. So the question now is, does that now justify spending $35 million on uh, more patrol boats? Uh, so the debate, some are saying, well, okay, you want to consolidate on your gains? Well, good on you. Others are saying uh, with the, I mean, with the Senate's literally just coming out yesterday my minority caucus i should point out wanting to you know giving the president six weeks to address insecurity should that 35 million have probably gone to um other areas maybe drones and maybe other issues with respect to, um, to security? right right that's How another that's, I mean, yeah. But anyway, look, as far as, you know, credit to, to this day, uh, the, 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 our sister publication at this day for bringing this out. It really did prompt the federal government to, uh, to have to respond because we even got an oil and gas analyst on the Global Business Report to talk about this. Um, yes, yeah, so what else is going on uh, in Nigeria? Um, the, there was a Treasury bill auction. Uh, no, actually, sorry, before we even get to the, um, the, uh, the TB auction, the Naira, Rufai was just talking about this. I don't really, can't really add anything more. Uh, I understand the Senate has summoned the central bank governor to um, come and, you know, talk to them about why the Naira has now hit 700 uh, to the dollar. I believe it is even front page on, uh, the, uh, the, on this day newspaper, today's edition. Uh, Mr. Feeney will get into that. But look, the supply is low. There's, um, you know, we talked about the education issue yesterday with parents not being able to access FX to be able to pay for fees outside 300 plus million uh, that's been paid, uh, or rather 300 and something million in the first five months of this year that have gone towards education. Let's move to T-bills. There was a primary market auction yesterday. How does anybody save under these with rates like this? Now, I mean, I know it's lower cost of borrowing for the government. There's a deficit. Um, the government, you know, with where the Fed has already hiked rates again, the Federal Reserve, which is going to um, pretty much attract more capital to um, uh, the United States. And so we get all of that. And so cost of borrowing, the Nigeria can't go to the euro bond market now because rates are rising. So it makes more sense to borrow domestically. But 91 day T bill, 2.8%. 182 day T bill, 44.1, 364, 7%. Look at inf inflation at 18.6. Just subtract any one of these figures from 18.6 and you have your real rate of return, which is in the negative. Savings accounts are even lower. I mean, I think Nigerian bonds, sovereign bonds are doing 12 or 13%, but even then, not, not, how do you save? Speaking of how do you save, there is a, um, a Bloomberg article that's, this is in the States though, but this also applies here. It's not you, it's inflation. How soaring prices are changing the dating game. Surging prices are making it more expensive to wine and dine in love interest, causing uh, datas to reassess their priorities. As a quote here, uh, if you take a look at that, those searching for love say, and shout out to my counselor, Odion, who's always on my neck about uh, settling down. Those, those searching <laughs> for love say they're feeling the pain. Among 3,000 users on the popular dating app Hinge, almost 41% said they're more concerned with the cost of dates now versus a year ago, with Gen Z respondents more likely to feel the pressure. Then he talked to a lady, Emily, 27-year-old in Tulsa, Oklahoma, saying her dating costs have doubled from $200 to $400 a month. As a result of that, there's an increase in the financial interest of a potential partner. Um, there you go here. So data is increasingly want partners who earn more money than they do. 38% from 2019 all the way to 46% in 2022. You bring this home and you look at how cost of living is impacting those who are single and searching in this country. I mean, cost of courtship, restaurants, um, att attractions, uh, food now, if you go to a restaurant, is, is way much higher. Food inflation is 20%. 
Cost of weddings. If you want to get uh, uh, book a hall right now, Diesel has to run that hall while you are partying and entertaining your guests. That's over three hundred percent. Then you also go to um, the exchange rate that we just talked about. It's a disincentive to honeymoon travel because uh, look at the cost of uh, an economy flight now overseas is pa it's gone past a million naira. Uh, and then your school fees, healthcare costs. If you consider we're raising a family, it's all weighing on that uh, as well. So it's it's quite heavy for for those uh, in this country. Uh, we go to Kenya. Kenya actually surprised the markets. They didn't, doctor, they didn't raise the rates. They kept it at 7.5. Um, they said that they see inflation easing um, over the yeah. next few months. Yeah, so it's like Ghana, yeah. they, left, they left their rates. And then finally, South Africa. We talk about President Buhari needing to address a whole number of issues. Ramaphosa this week held a press conference on the energy crisis in South Africa. He said now that the South Africa is looking at privatizing um, independent power uh, IPPs, independent power producers. They are even going to give them a break on getting a license because of the blackouts. Our correspondent, our Rice TV correspondent in Johannesburg, uh, Mkulisi Mosongo, he, I had an interview with him one evening. He said, Lord, this is a miracle we're even having this, uh, is this interview because I thought, the, I didn't know when the lights were going to go out. But he has, it is a priority and the president of South Africa has stood up to talk to his people. That's just power. There's still unemployment in South Africa. There's still other issues. But when you bring this home to the senators asking President Buhari and giving him a whole six weeks, six weeks sounds like a long time to address insecurity. The Arufai has called for this. This is what leadership we are asking for, for our president, our leader to stand up and address the current issues in the country that's that's our okay. in a crisis you can't keep quiet you, you have to you call have to and the speak to the people and that's why i'm calling for it again we need a constant economic briefing shared by the president we need a state of the economy and state of security address shared by the president we even need the president to come us and tell us what they've been discussing in all these security meetings because we are not seeing results. Exactly. And what they are doing as regards the economy because we are not seeing results. We are not seeing results. People are hungry. People are suffering. Look at the T-bills. It's Look just, at where we are. <laughs> savings accounts are 2%. Look, 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 look at where we are as a country. You can't even save. You, get, you keep money in the bank, you are poor. You put it in your you put it in investment, you are poor. Everything, you are poor. It's it, just terrible. They have no idea. What they are doing to the mindset of Nigeria. You've made them poor. And that's working people, though. That's people that's who have people. jobs. You haven't even gotten to unemployed and people that's who are put. Rotus, nobody can tell me otherwise. The only thing still saving Nigeria is the informal sector. Yeah, I can agree the with that. The only thing still saving that. Nigeria today as we speak is the informal sector. And that's why we want solutions. We want solutions. We want debates on the economy. We want people to come out and tell us. Look at the cost of love. How are people going to get love? <laughs> How are people going to get love? Are you single people well, are in trouble? You get. Uh, uh, Doctor, Rutus, yeah. All the subjects you have uh, outlined are very important. Very, very. But uh, this uh, professional bachelor's uh, manifesto <laughs> is uh, very urgent. Doctor, as urgent as the issue of the Naira. It is. I hope nobody listening to you will be discouraged to think that, uh, oh, you shouldn't uh, cut, you shouldn't go into the institution of, uh, uh, of uh, marriage. Okay? <laughs> the rule here is that, well, you cut your cloth according to your size. You say the cost of courtship is rising. Is and you are citing examples from America. Okay. You are quoting dollar. Okay, here in Nigeria. Yes. Okay, everything is costly, everything. but uh, you know you can make your choice. <laughs> Instead of uh, taking your girlfriend to a high-end uh, restaurant in uh, Victoria Island or on the Atlantic Ocean, Mama. you can go to a pepper soup joint. <laughs> pepper soup joint is not yet yeah, uh, affordable. Oh, you you, you can go to Mama Put. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll be surprised. No, doctor, yeah, doctor, no. Doctor, 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 you said because it, 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 it depends on the location of the girlfriend. She which know, which know, location? You know, choose know. the one that you can afford. <laughs> You say the cost of wedding has gone up. If I we spend too much on wedding in this country, we do. Uh, uh, my, should I be? Come and know me. Yes. I, uh, they call it in Yoruba. <laughs> in, introduction. <laughs> After introduction, you say you are going to the registry. Exactly. After registry, you go to court. Uh, you go to uh, church. After church, you do reception. reception. You know, cut it down. Every uh, marriage, traditional wedding, uh, registry, uh, the church, Every, everyone is combined. valid. Yes. Choose one. You don't have <laughs> to marry true. a woman three times. Yes. 
Yes. Just do one. Just do introduction. Yes. It's valid. So that argument about uh, cost of marriage going up, the and then uh, you are talking about a uh, honeymoon. Cost yes, of now, There's no rule that says if you want to marry, you must do honeymoon. Ah. You don't have to do honeymoon. Doctor. No. <laughs> if you have to do honeymoon, you don't have to travel abroad. So where we go? You, you just take a, a small vacation, uh, stay in one uh, one room uh, <laughs> yeah, hotel, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and you'll be fine. You know, so please, you battle us. <laughs> At that argument, I don't don't agree. Agree. it is when you now have children but, hey, that you can start talking of school fees, fees. Uh, healthcare costs, but you can also manage the number of children that you can have. We'll go to team one. Everybody wow. does not. We'll do team one. And the whole point about wow. marriage is not about cost. <laughs> okay. Wow. Wow. I, I, I speak to you as a man who is uh, wow. who has very rich experience wow. in this department. <laughs> you, you know, you just wow. the, the emphasis <laughs> is on companionship, is on happiness. Is uh, so don't start with. Uh, you don't have to take a loan Do to you marry your <laughs> Okay, yes, finally, 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 <laughs> finally, <Yes. laughs> on the Naira. The Naira, doctor. We've been saying here that to save the Naira is a major challenge. And the issue is, look, the Naira is down. It, is. Mm. it was uh, Senator Biodo Olujimi who moved the motion to uh, summon the CBN governor that he has not done enough to defend the Naira, mm. and which is not true. The... Uh, the uh, CBN at the time banned the Bureau de Change. Yes. Right? That's okay. still banned. So it's yeah. not that the CBN has not made effort. It is just that those measures have not worked. Yes. Okay? Uh, the CBN has uh, announced some other measures to try and uh, encourage diaspora remittances. Yeah, yeah. Those measures have not worked. Unfortunately, not. The Naira is, is, uh, is a very scarce commodity as we all. Uh, uh, grapple with uh, the rising pandemic of uh, empty pockets, mm -hmm. which is the biggest pandemic that we are facing in this uh, country today. So what should the uh, CBN do? Would the CBN reconsider some of its policies? Mm. The parallel market that the CBN governor says is not the, uh, is not the realistic market is actually the reference market. Yes. Now the, it's uh, 710 Naira to the dollar. There is liquidity squeeze within the economy. Even the banks you can't get money yeah, from yeah. the banks. Yeah. Yeah. They say it's, uh, it's uh, 430. Even though it was uh, 410 last week on the official market, it's, it's, it has also depreciated within the official uh, market. So maybe the CBN needs to take a second look at its uh, uh, policies. Because under Soludo, under Sanusi, you know, they, they, they try to manage the forex through the, uh, through the uh, uh, Bureau de Change. Second, Lack of productivity in this economy. Thank you. We can't even Thank produce you. oil. This is the only country that I've seen where the, the, the money we use to service debt is more than the money we make. Mm -hmm. So, how will your Naira do very well? Right. Companies are folding up. They can't access forest. Uh, uh, manufacturers cannot access uh, diesel. Aviation. And you want the Naira yeah. to do well? Right. Planes cannot fly. Mm. Then, on top of it, there is oil theft. Huge oil theft. Oil theft is a major uh, disincentive, okay? Who is doing something about that? Mm. Uh, and then, of course, we have a subsidy regime uh, that, uh, you know, is not helping the economy. Mm. So these are issues. How do we become productive? How would we manage the Naira? And I don't like this idea of ways and means. Right. Because the right. easiest uh, unintelligent way to give about it is to just print money. Mm. When you print money, you give us more difficulty, inflation goes up. Right. And even when you say you raise benchmark interest rate, mm. we don't see any effect. Right. So we're in a very difficult situation. We need more creative thinking. Mm. To save the Naira is a task that must be done. Right. So that this pandemic of empty pockets and frustration and un unemployment uh, we will begin to address them. Yeah. Well, you don't like ways and means advances, but the federal government seems to love it. We're yeah. talking about yeah. 18 trillion naira yeah. in yeah. violation yeah. of the CBN Act. That's what I really want to hear from the Senate. Yeah. And also, you talked about subsidy. Subsidy has now surpassed all revenue by 210 billion yeah. naira. And Rufai, don't hold your breath about any kind of weekly economic briefing. Ah. This is why elections matter. Right. It's actually hmm. unfair to hmm. vote for somebody who we've all known is a man of few words, mm. and if you're going to be polite about how mm -hmm. to put it, yeah. and then suddenly expect him to become loquacious on the job. It's simply not going to happen. That is why the personality, the character of the president mm. always yeah. matters. Mm. If you want communication, elect somebody who does communicate. Right. If that's mm -hmm. their style or it's not. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Rotis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.